Hey guys, thanks for coming. I'm Max. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made a realistic watercolor painting in Procreate using my Watercolor Max Packs brushes. I'll talk a little bit more about the brushes later and stick around to the end because I've got some stuff I wanna chat with you guys about. Vision for this channel and everything else. Okay, enough talking. Let's get to the fun stuff. So this piece is a cafe sketch. One of my favorite things to do is to draw at coffee shops, bars, parks, public places. Real life is full of surprises. And as a character designer and former character artist, it's one of the purest forms of inspiration and practice for me. In most cases, I'm out to capture people with interesting features or natural, candid body language. Sometimes I'll go for an accurate likeness, but in many cases, the sketch may only serve as a base to build unique characters off of, or explore the variety of real features that you can bring into your original creations later on. Working from life is difficult, but very rewarding. I enjoy life drawing too, but this is different in many ways, where a professional model will pose for you as long as you like, capturing people going about their day is a very different exercise. Your subject may only hold the pose you like for a brief window, where you have to get as much down as you can before they move. Speed takes practice, but with time, it will sharpen your observational skills to the point where you can glance at a person and hold their key features in your mind long enough to get a sketch down before they leave. So with this in mind, I start with primary shapes and big ideas first. Um, in this case, he made a great stable pyramid shape with a nice like straight line in his back. Um, and of course, his nose was the, the obvious feature that I was focused on exaggerating. Um, that came first, and I captured that in case he left before I was done. I still had a sense of him, but I was lucky here. This guy held his pose for a very long time, and it gave me the chance to really observe his features, and especially his hands. Um, since they were a key part of that patience in his body language, I had a lot of fun putting a lot of time into them. So we're starting with the detailed line work, and I'm beginning with his hands. I like to start with a place of high detail so that I can establish my level of detail for the entire piece going forward. In this case, I'm starting with his hands because I feel like my undersketch got his face pretty well, but his hands, I didn't know how long he was going to hold that pose, so I wanted to detail them as long as I had him there. Onto the face, now that I've got a little sense of that, I like some of the, the cartilage and structure in the nose um, because it is so prominent, I wanted to make sure that came through. Um, his eyes are handled semi-anatomically. Uh, um, I didn't want to go big cartoony eyes because it just didn't seem like it suited his style. Um, so in this case, I let them kind of be um, a little bit puffy. It kind of gave him a little bit of age. His hairline was something I had a lot of fun with, actually, just getting that really long, straight line. This is inspired by the real man, of course, um, but it was, you know, of course, I straightened it, simplified. Everything I'm doing, I'm, I'm making choices about finding the kind of core angles of things and trying to make sure that everything is a little bit more pleasing. You can see kind of my undersketch at the top of his skull, actually, is a little bit round. It's a little bit, I don't want to say boring, but it's just more interesting to leave it at a peak. Down with the clothes, so of course, now that I have a sense for the level of detail, that means I've got to step up in the clothing. So the wrinkles and things, he was wearing kind of a fleece uh, that I wanted to, to capture. And so you'll see the silhouette on the right side for his sleeve is more shaped than the left side. His uh, screen left arm, his right arm, is a cleaner straight line. Part of the reason I'm doing this is um, I know if I just put too many curves in there, it'll just become a mess of wrinkles. Um, so I can contain those wrinkles. It'll still feel sort of curvy by adding a bunch of interior detail. So you might ask yourself why I'm hatching so much if I'm gonna be painting this later. And that's because having tighter line work and hatching allows me to be looser with the watercolor and that's something that would feel right in my sketchbook. So 
So as we come to the end of the line work, it's a good time to reassess anything that we want to address. His pinky finger is one of the things that bothers me. In reality, his actual pinky finger was kind of tucked under like that, but in the drawing, it looks like a stylistic choice and I don't prefer that. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to fix it. Real quick before we get into painting, I wanna to talk to you guys about my brushes. So I sell Procreate brushes called Max Packs. Link below um, or go to maxpacks.art. I'm really proud of these brushes and my latest pack is my watercolor Max Pack. That's what you're about to see me paint with. I think you'll love them. They're built on the new Procreate 5 brush engine and they're so powerful. This new engine is absolutely astonishing and they're my best brushes yet. So that's what you're about to see. I'll do some more tutorials about these brush guides and everything else in the future. But in the meantime, I'm gonna show you a realistic approach, but that's not the only thing you can do with these brushes. Just know that this is one option of many. These are digital brushes you can use them however you like. Anyway, back to the painting. Okay, now that the line work is finished, a word about watercolor. Watercolors, at least if you're trying to replicate realistic watercolors, you want to work light to dark. In this case, I'm starting with some shadows, adding some tones, but basically the, the overall goal is layering. Um, you always want to save your highlights. Once they're gone, they're gone in real watercolor. Of course, this is digital, so the rules are flexible, but ideally, if you want to replicate the real thing, you layer and you save your highlights. You're seeing me right now, in fact, going for very deliberate mark making. Um, the other thing about watercolor is you see basically every mark you make because it is transparent. It's crucial that you make meaningful marks. So I'll undo and redo, undo and redo, and make sure that the marks that I'm making are interesting um, and not just kind of willy nilly and blend it all together and be done with it. So what you see me doing right now is the warms and cools. It's nice to layer those in. Um, I don't try to hit those in the beginning. It's nice to sneak up on those tones. So word about edges. Edges in watercolor are super important. Um, if you can, hit the outline where you expect it to go. If not, you, what you see me doing is overshooting the line. Um, I think this is fine for big grungy puddles like the kind I'm making. I'm gonna have more layers um, as I go so I know this is not the last layer I'm hitting. Um, so I'll, I'll be playing with my edges. You can see me kind of feathering things out and making a nice little vignette there. Um, but I'm also erasing out and using smudge brushes to um, just add some little visual interest, little bleeds and little uh, hairy edges and some crisper edges. That variety is really crucial to making an interesting image. And I don't overclean. I don't like to um, have really hard, perfect edges. That is visual interest that you're erasing. So now it's time for the face. Like I said, we can always erase out our highlights later. So I'm going to do that. And you notice I'm leaving some hard edges and slightly blurring some of them so it feels more like I left them from the beginning. Um, I think that's really important. If you look at real watercolor, it's rarely just soft everywhere. The way I like to blend these, I have my finger touch set to smudge so that I'm not constantly switching tools, I'm just using my finger to dial those little edges in. Again, more layering, you know, we've talked about this, no surprises here. I'm just working up two tones and I'm using warms and cools to give it a little bit of visual interest, give it a little bit of that variety that you see in real watercolor where you're kind of mixing on the paper. I like that stuff a lot. Okay, so I'm gonna show you a trick. I felt like I needed more texture. So first I filled a layer with white and then painted the fill grainy in black. And then I set that to soft light. You can see me dialing in the amount of grain that I want. And I did it in this case because it just seemed to suit his personality. I 
quite like the way I handled the cup here. Um, I started with just a little bit of shadow tone and then I erased out some highlights and then used the bleed opaque to add a bit of warmth to the shadow side. And then on its own layer, I took the cardboard sleeve and set it to multiply. That way it would pick up some of the color changes as if it was receiving the same light. So now the table, there's, there's kind of an idea of economy of strokes for watercolor. In reality, of course, I'm taking multiple strokes and I'm layering things, but I want it almost to feel like it's one mark. I don't want it to feel overworked because it's just, it's not an important piece. So I don't want to attract too much attention to it. You guys, I'm laughing because it's hard to watch myself on camera. I am not used to this. <laughs> Let me talk about the future of this channel. Um, <laughs> this is so outside my comfort zone. I'm having a good time with this. I, I enjoy reaching out to people and talking kind of conversationally. There's not a great space for this on things like Instagram. Um, but the last couple of years I've been doing things like CTN and Lightbox and um, <laughs> I've really enjoyed connecting with people and talking about art and just kind of being a person and not just being an art account. Um, I found that I've met some really cool people and I want to I want to connect with people in a slightly different way. That's what this channel hopefully is going to be. It'll be tutorials, it'll be art, it'll be all the things that you would hope for it to be. Um, if you're here for brush guides and tutorials, that's absolutely on the table. That's all coming. Um, but in the meantime, I'm kind of starting a little slow. This is me easing into this thing, right? This is not my usual gig. So this is fun. I'm enjoying this. I want to do more of it, but it's also, I'm going to be finding my voice. Comment below. What, you know, what do you like? What do you want to see next? What do you think um, I could do better? <laughs> be nice. Like I said, this is kind of my first video like this, um, but I want this to be, I want to build a community around uh, or extend the community that exists. So um, with that, I want to um, talk a little bit about Instagram. I know YouTube is a funny, funny place to maybe talk about Instagram, but um, to those people who made it here from Instagram, thank you so much. I just hit 100,000 uh, followers on Instagram. And let me tell you, that is just humbling and lovely and uh, inspiring. And I just want to thank you all so much. It's been really like from the bottom of my heart, I never expected it to turn into what it's become. And um, genuinely, I've made real friends through Instagram. I've um, found confidence in my work that I didn't know that I uh, that I needed. I felt like, I mean, I have a really lovely little community there and uh, not even that little, 100,000, come on. That's enormous and I really thank you guys so much. Um, boy, I, it's just been a really fun trip and I, I thank you for coming along with me on it. And hopefully we got a lot more stuff to come. This is gonna be part of it, things like this, um, I've got, workshops coming up in the future. I've got um, in, in Europe, which is so flattering and that wouldn't have happened without a inst sizable Instagram following, of course. Um, but really it's thanks to you guys and thank you so much for your support, for buying the brushes. I hope you enjoy them. Like I said, remember, link below maxpacks.art to buy the brushes. Really, this has been like the most exciting development in my art life, just being able to find community and friends within the wider art world this way. So. Thank you. Um, I hope you'll come along with me on this next chapter and see what it has in store. Cause honestly, it's gonna be a surprise to all of us. I'm kind of figuring it out as I go along. So in the meantime, stay healthy. I hope you guys are doing okay in this weird time. Um, keep making art, be creative, find something positive in all this, take on a big project. This is kind of my big project in the midst of all this weirdness. And it's been fun and useful for me to dive into something that's not just my usual thing. So if you can learn anything from, from this, maybe that's something you take away. Anyway, guys, make art and be safe. I'll see you in the next one.